Hey guys, welcome to our channel Forensic Genesis. Press the bell icon to stay updated. Introduction to Forensic Science Lecture 2 Forensic Science The History From the earliest times, the investigation tool have been observation and interpretation of physical evidences, which was largely dependent on witnesses. In second half of 19th century, science was applied on investigations which improved the validity of the conclusions drawn. Investigating officers themselves reached out to academic departments of sciences which had proper knowledge and means for the required analysis. As the population took a rise, number of crimes also increased, and law enforcement could not depend solely on the memory of police officers and witnesses. The search of objective and impartial evidence as against the small and oral testimony of unwilling, hostile and unobservant witnesses turned to science for assistance. History of Forensic Science Matthew Orifelia, also known as the father of forensic toxicology, he was first to publish the treatise on detection of poison. It established Forensic Toxicology as a Legitimate Science Endeavor Alphonse Bertillon, also known as Father of Criminal Identification, he developed first scientific identification system known as Bertillon's system. This system was based on taking a series of body measurements to distinguish one individual from others. Francis Galton, first definitive study of fingerprints was done by him. He developed a methodology of classifying them for filing and also published a book of fingerprints, first statistical proof supporting the uniqueness of them. Hans Gross, he was first to describe the application of scientific disciplines to field of investigation. Karl Landsteiner, in 1901, he discovered human blood can be grouped into different categories. Edmund Lockard, he propounded the principle of exchange, which we will discuss further, and also devised the workable crime laboratory. Albert S. Osborne, he authored first significant text in field of question documents and was also responsible for its acceptance in court as scientific evidence. Leon Lettuce. In 1915, he devised a procedure for human blood grouping of old stains and applied to criminal investigations. Kelvin Goddard, he established the use of comparison microscope in examination of bullets. Contribution of India India had a huge contribution if we talk about forensic science. These are the events which led to set up the first ever fingerprint bureau of world and I am proud to say it was in India. Sir Edward Richard Henry became Secretary of State of India, Bengal in 1873 and later in 1891 became Sir Inspector General of Police of Bengal and had already been exchanging letters with Francis Galton in lieu of fingerprint identification system which he implemented in 1891 by taking left thumb impressions to each anthropometric file card for criminal record. In 1894, he instructed that impressions of all 10 fingers of each prisoner must be taken into account and added to anthropometric cards. He assigned this work to two Bengali officers, Khan Bahadur Azizul Haq and Rai Bahadur Hemchand Bose, to study the problems in classification. Eventually, a mathematical formula of primary classification was devised by them, which was based on fingerprint patterns. This led to establishment of first fingerprint bureau of world in Calcutta, which was later emerged into first forensic science laboratory. History of forensic science in India The first fingerprint bureau of the world in Calcutta in 1897, most of the states established this bureau till 1910. Government of India established Government Examiner of Question Documents at Shimla in 1906. Serologist and Chemical Examiner to Government of India at Calcutta in 1910. In 1952, the already existing 
lab in Calcutta was merged with more scientific divisions to form first forensic science laboratory, further known as Central Forensic Science Laboratory in 1957, which functioned under IB, that is Intelligence Bureau. A forensic science advisory committee was formed under Ministry of Home Affairs to organize state laboratories and later revitalized in 1972. In 1974, the control was transferred to BPRD, that is Bureau of Police Research and Development, which led to setting up of laboratories under state governments of India. Today, the Directorate of Forensic Science Services under Ministry of Home Affairs is headed by Chief Forensic Scientist and is responsible for development and control of laboratories. So, let's move on to principle and laws of forensic science. They are law of individuality, principle of exchange, law of regressive change, law of analysis, law of circumstantial facts, law of probability and law of comparison. These are the basics of our field which we always have to keep in mind while working any case. So let's look at them one by one. Law of individuality Regarded as building law of forensic science given by Paul Kirk, it states that every object has its own individual characteristic. That is, no two objects are exactly same. It means that every single object that exists have its own individual characteristics. Even when we talk about monozygotic twins, twins that are generated from a single zygote, they can be differentiated on the basis of fingerprints and retinal scan. It emphasizes on the fact that things can be similar but not same and that thin line in between is what we should always keep in mind. Human is still a big example. Let's talk about a pen. Same company, same model, but it's not necessary that they have exact same amount of ink in them. Let's assume amount of ink is also same too. Then what about the barcode sticker it has? So this is what the law of individuality is. Principle of exchange given by Sir Edmund Locard, also known as Locard's principle of exchange. According to this principle, whenever two objects come in contact with each other, they exchange some matter. It is one of the major things you always need to keep in mind if you are a forensic expert. It means that whenever two objects physically touch each other, they leave some of their matter at the point of contact, even if it is in trace amount. The best example is a pain transfer in accidents. When an accident happens, the point of contact between the vehicles will exchange the matter, here paint, and this paint helps us identify the culprit in hit and run cases. Law of progressive change. Everything changes with passage of time. You must have listened to the famous quote, change is the only constant. This law explains the same. Nothing remains constant as the time moves and these changes can be gradual as well as sudden. Let's take an example of blood. Suppose you saw a drop of blood at a crime scene after one day of the incident. Most probably it would have become dried from the liquid state it had at the time of incident. And obviously it would have had some chemical changes. Now let's suppose if you collect it without adding any preservative, the blood would degrade more and more with time. So, this is the law of progressive change. Law of comparison. Only life can be compared with life. Before explaining this, I want to tell you that there are two types of sample. First is the evidence you collect from the crime scene and to identify to whom it belongs, you ask for samples from the suspects. For example, let's take that car incident. It is a hit and run case and at the victim car you found a white paint and you have a list of suspect having white color cars. You will take samples of the paint of their car and not the samples of seat cover or say tire prints. This is what this law says. Blood can be compared with blood, paint with paint and fingerprints with fingerprints. Law of analysis. The analysis can no better be the sample analyzed. 
इट मीन्स दैट क्वालिटी ऑफ एनालिसिस इट इज डिमाइन बाय द क्वालिटी ऑफ सैम्पल अंडर एनालिसिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर टेस्टिंग अ सैम्पल टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन इज इट ब्लड और नॉट then the analysis you do is mostly dependent on whether the sample was preserved carefully or not does the sample has any contamination do the sample contain preservative that is hindering with your analysis all these questions must be considered now let's move on to law of probability all the findings conclusions and result are based on probability This law states that during the finding of the result or drawing conclusion from an analysis the facts like quality of sample advantages and disadvantages of technique used chain of custody sample handling etc should always be considered and as a result the conclusion or findings always have a certain probability of being right or wrong law of circumstantial facts facts do not lie men can and do so it basically talks about the witness statements and oral evidence the thing is the statement made by a witness includes his own judgment which have a strong probability of biasness resulting in much less reliability than scientific evidences and reports also people lie and can turn hostile any moment the hostility might be due to fear monetary benefit or see any other selfish motive this is the main reason of origin of forensic science that is the search for reliability sections of iea and crpc that is indian evidence act and code of criminal procedure now we will move to the sections which relate to the field of forensic science i will be explaining some of them and for details you can download the link given in our description section 2 the indian evidence act 1872 cases in which statement of relevant fact by person who is dead or cannot be found etc is relevant section 45 the indian evidence act 1872 opinions of expert when the court has to form an opinion upon a point of foreign law or of science or art as to identity of handwriting or finger impressions the opinions upon that point of person specially skilled in such foreign law science or art or in questions as to identify handwriting or finger impressions are relevant facts such persons are called experts it defines the category of people in which are people are considered as an expert by law and states that their statements are relevant when court has to form an opinion related to the field of expert section 45a opinion of examiner of electronic evidence section 46 facts bearing upon opinions of expert section 47 opinion as to handwriting when relevant when the court has to form an opinion as to the person by whom any document was written or signed the opinion of any person acquainted with the handwriting of the person by whom it is supposed to be written or signed that it was or was not written or signed by that person is a relevant fact according to this section the person who is acquainted or known with the handwriting or signature of other person can make statement whether that writing or signature belong to that specific person or not that statement would be considered as relevant by law section 57 facts of which court must take judicial notice section 58 facts admitted need not be proved section 73 comparison of signature writing or seal with others admitted or proved comparison of signature writing or seal with others admitted or proved in order to ascertain whether a signature writing or seal is that of the person by whom it purports to have been written or made any signature writing or seal admitted or proved to the satisfaction of the court to have been written or made by that person may be compared with the one which is to be proved although that signature writing or seal has not been produced or proved by any other purpose the court may direct any person present in court to write any words or figures for the purpose of enabling the court to compare the words or figures so written with any words or figures alleged 
to have been written by such person. This section applies also with any necessary modifications to finger impressions. This section says that it's up to the court to accept or reject the sample which is to be compared with the evidence. The sample can be either admitted or proved and court can ask for the same. Section 73A Proof as to verification of digital signature. Section 135 Order of production and examination of witnesses. The order in which witnesses are produced and examined shall be regulated by the law and practice for the time being relating to civil and criminal procedure respectively and in the absence of any such law by the discretion of the court. It means that order in which witnesses are produced will be according to law and practice or by the discretion of the court. Section 136 Judge to decide as to admissibility of evidence. Section 137 Examination in Chief The examination of a witness by party who calls him shall be called his examination in chief. Cross examination The examination of a witness by the adverse party shall be called his cross examination. Re examination The examination of a witness subsequent to the cross examination by the party. Who called him shall be called his re-examination. According to this section, first the witness is examined by the party which will be called examination and chief, then the opposition which will be called cross-examination and then again by the party which he was called by called as re-examination. Section 138, Order of Examination. Section 159, Refreshing Memory. Section 292 in the Code of Criminal Procedure, 1973. Evidence of the Officers of the Mint. Any document purporting to be report under any officer of the Mint or the mentioned officers can be used as evidence and they can be called for testimony and would not be called as evidence. Section 293 in the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 reports of certain government scientific experts. So these are the references. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. We are open to your opinions and questions in our comment section. Forensify your life with Forensic Genesis.